Good morning, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Campbell here coming to you live from my living room. And I wanted to share a great book with you today called Old Henry. This book was written by Joan Bloss. Um, take a look at the cover. Yeah, Henry definitely looks a bit old. And see if you can recognize any things that are in the picture with him and maybe make a prediction about what's gonna happen in this story. I like his shirt, don't you? Old Henry. Here's the cover page. Have a few more details about some of his things. I like that bird. The story begins when a stranger appears and moves into a house that was vacant for years. No one thought he meant to stay. The house was drafty and dark and gray. And more than seven years had passed since anyone had lived there last. Here comes old Henry up to the house for rent. He meant to stay, he had no doubt. It suited him from the inside out. And in its vast and dusty spaces, all the things that he had found places. That Henry. There are lots of places to put his things. The neighbors watched him moving in and promised each other that he'd soon begin to fix things up a bit. Hmm, but Henry, he did not think of it. I don't see any fixing up going on. With money enough to pay the rent, his books, birds, and cooking pots, he was content, and never did notice, or else he didn't care, that people whispered everywhere, place is a disgrace. At least, they remarked, you would think he could show a little respect for the neighborhood. That place is a disgrace. The other houses are pretty nice. At last, they decided to form a committee, and they went to him saying, we are proud of our city. If you'd only help out, just think how good it would look. Excuse me, he bowed and went back to his book. I like his bird. They then find him fines. They threaten jail. They wrote him long letters and sent them by mail. Dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry, you should. Still the hollyhocks wilted, unwatered, unkept. The gateposts stayed crooked. The walk stayed unswept. And things went on as they'd begun. And he angered his neighbors one by one. Can't we make him sweep his walks? No, there's nothing we can do. Oh, nasty Polly. Get out of here, bird. Shoo, Polly, shoo. On a day in November, they sought the advice of the mayor who suggested being nice. Being nice? What? Please, said the mayor, try it twice. But when two ladies baked him a pie, he said, mm, I'm not hungry. No, thank you. Bye-bye. He sure does like books. And when three of the men said they'd shovel his snow, he quickly yelled out the window, No, you can go. We told you so. Now Henry, too, he had kind of had his fill. 
That night he grumbled, I never will. I never will live like the rest of them, neat and the same. I'm sorry I came. Oh, Henry. Then he packed some things in shopping bags and tied the rest in three old rags. He didn't make plans. He just left a short note, a hastily written, gone to Dakota, and he taped it to the big front door. And then just like that, no one lived there anymore. Gone to Dakota. Bye-bye, old Henry. A little sad. His daylilies bloomed, his flocks grew tall. They picked his apples in the fall. They picked his apples, and now and then, someone had asked. Someone wanted to say, remember when? Oh, remember when? Remember that time? Later still, on winter snow, they asked one another, where did he go? Will he come again? So you, you see what kind of time is going by, boys and girls. Fall, now we're back to winter. His house looks so empty, so dark in the night, and having him gone doesn't make us feel more right. That Henry. Maybe some other time we'd all get along, not thinking that somebody has to be wrong. And we don't have to make such a terrible fuss just because everybody's not like us. Yeah, his neighbors are feeling bad. Meanwhile, old Henry, to his great surprise, was missing the neighbors who brought him pies. In spite of their nagging, he really did care. He cared for them in their street, so he wrote to the mayor. Wait a minute, is that his bed on the hill? Oh, Henry. Dear Mayor, I am finding it hard to be far from my house and my tree in my yard. If I mended the gate and I shoveled the snow, would they not scold my birds? Can I just let my grass grow? Please write and tell me the answers so then we can all get together. Sincerely yours, Henry. If that's backwards because I'm videotaping. Oh, Henry, he's packed up. The end. Clap for the book, clap for the book. Okay, boys and girls, so when I was a third grade teacher, I would read this to my class and then I would ask them to write back to Henry. So if you have some time today, I would love it if you would pretend that you were the mayor or you were one of Henry's neighbors. Maybe one of the ladies that baked pies or one of the guys that tried to help him shovel or some of the ones that picked the apples. But could you write back to Henry and tell him what you think? He is clearly waiting for an answer. He is packed up. He wants to come home. Use some really good feeling words to help Henry feel better and welcome. Maybe use some of our Cooper's Character Club words, like determination or respect or kindness. And give Henry a little note so he knows what to do. If you write your note, maybe your mom and dad could take a screenshot of it and post it on my Twitter page near the video. Or maybe they could even email it to me. But thank you for listening to my story. And remember, I miss you very much and can't wait till we're together again. Stay safe and wash your hands a lot.